morning, church. Happy Sabbath. All right. It's pretty heavy uh, scripture, huh? Daniel four seventeen. So. Uh, Some things are heavy and some things aren't so heavy, right? That's the way life is. Went to go see Dad last night. And he's still not quite there, I guess. It's tough to see him. Superman all melted down. But, um, I don't know, one of the nurses came up to me when I was leaving last night. She says, I... I I was really touched by the way you were holding your dad. She says, men don't do that. And I said to her, I says, well, I just really miss talking to him. You know? So. We should live our life like nobody's watching, right? Like we don't care about what other people think. We ought to care what God thinks. Right? That's all that really matters. But what do we do? How do we live our lives? We live our lives in a way that we're concerned what other people think. Right? I mean, they've done test over test. And they, they, they've checked people out. They've had... I, I just saw a survey the other day. They, they took ten people, right? And they put them in this room. And they had nine of them that were going to lie. Okay, so they're going to bring you up and they're going to take, they're going to put this graph on there and they're going to tell you this is the short one and this is the long one, whatever we'll talk about, right? And nine of the people all agree with this teacher that's lying. And the one person in there is like, you know, the first time, the first time they go, no, you guys are wrong. But you know what? Then the second time they just fall in line. Why do people do that? Why don't they stand up for the truth? Why do they just fall in line? Why? I got a thought in my head because we care about what people think. You know, you don't want to be weird or the oddball, right? So you throw truth away so that you can be in the clique. We're talking about human nature here. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm just talking about your human nature. This is what we all have. But this is part of the battle. This has to be fought against. Because it's evil. Right? It's evil. And, and in this scripture, Daniel 4.17, we, we, it, it clicks us back to remind us, reminding us who is really in charge. Right? Because God has this fella that we now call the devil who's running around down here on a pretty long leash. And he really seems like he's in control. A lot of the time, doesn't it? Um, but there is one that is really in control. And God is either responsible for everything or nothing. Right? And this is an ugly thing that we have to go through, this sin experiment, if you'll call it that. I don't know a better way to say it. But um, God has promised that when this thing is finished, it is finished forever. Right? Forever. No more. God has promised us that sin will raise its ugly head. And I know many of you have heard me say this, and a few of you are here, the visitors that haven't heard this, that you go 2,000 years, right? Sin comes full circle. God wipes away everything with a flood, right? 2,000 years after that, what do you get? Sin has come full circle again, but somebody comes on the scene. 
Jesus Christ. And the Bible clearly says that he and those 12 men flipped the world upside down. Turned the world upside down. Started the clock over, if you will. And where are we at now? 6,000 years. Right there again, where sin's come in full circle. Now, I, I don't know why good men don't do anything. They just keep their mouth shut because they're afraid that somebody's going to be offended. But you have people parading down the streets with, what do you want to call it, pride? That's what they say. Chanting, we're coming for your children. And nobody has a problem with this. The church is just silent. Are you kidding me? What's the problem here? Hello? I, I mean, our forefathers were so much stronger. We seem so weak today. Why? Why are we so weak? Why is it everybody just, just lays down? Any theories? Because they're worried about what somebody's going to think. Hello? I, I want you guys to realize that the reason that we're in this situation that we're in is because obviously our great and great, great, great grandfather and grandmother did not listen to God. They listened to somebody else and cared about maybe what he thought or what she thought or what he thought rather than what God had said. Because when it all boils down to where the rubber meets the road, what really matters is what God says. Because when you think about that, when God speaks, it is. God can't lie. So what if he says something not good against us? What do you think that means? You're going to fight him? You're going to argue with him? You're going to tell him no? Peter tried that once when, when God said that you're going to deny me three times. He said, it's not me. Maybe them guys. But I won't do it. So what was the right response for Peter? The moment Jesus said that he was going to deny him, Peter should have dropped down on his knees right there and said, Lord, help me. I have no idea, but if you say it, I know it's true. But, you think maybe pride was a little involved there? Yeah, you know, not me. These guys might, but not me. Now, I'm not just here to beat up Peter, because we're all just as bad. We're concerned about what other people think. You know? How many here do people know you by, oh, that's, yeah, that's Jesse. She's that Jesus freak. Hello? That's probably a badge of honor, don't you think? How many of us carry the badge of honor? Or... We walk around like this. Yeah. You know, the Bible calls us to be ambassadors for Christ, right? What's an ambassador? A representative of another country, right? Another world, maybe. Ambassadors for Christ. But I think too many of us, including myself, are secret agents. You know? Daniel 4.17, this matter, it's right on your bulletin, this matter is by the decree of the watchers. Who are the watchers? Who are the watchers? The angels, maybe? If you think this is the only planet that God has created life, you ought to study your Bible a little harder. There's probably some other people that are watchers. Probably don't look like us. I don't know what they look like. 
but God has way more creation than just us. And by the demand and the demand by the word of the holy ones, holy ones. Hello? Holy ones? Father, Son, Holy Spirit? I don't know anybody else holy, do you? Hello? Um, far as I'm concerned, there's only been one sane man that ever walked the face of this planet, and that's Jesus Christ. Everybody else has got something wrong. Okay? In a sane man, in an insane society, must seem insane. Okay? Even the lawyers of that time, well, nobody ever spoke as this man speaks. Okay? And lawyers speak, you know how they speak. I was doing a deposition the other day. And this lawyer asked me a question four times. As far as I was concerned, I answered it four times. But he didn't think so. So he asked me the same question a different way for the fifth time. And I answered it with a question. And he said to me, he says, you, you, you can't answer a question with a question. And I said, isn't that what you lawyers do? He didn't like that very much, but we had a stare down that lasted probably 12 seconds or whatever. And my lawyer spoke up and said, he answered the question. Listen to me. This, this whole thing that happened in heaven, what, what, what was that? Is it not the same thing that's happening here? It's a political war, brothers and sisters. A political war. Now, God gave this country the best, the absolute best government you could possibly get, in my opinion, and I hope some of yours. As far as a man with an evil heart, there couldn't have been a better system set up than what was set up for us by our forefathers. I mean, they left it all on the battlefield. These guys died poor, most of them. They gave it all to make it happen. But God's government probably looks more like communism. Think about it, really. But communism with a leader that has your best interest at heart? Wait a minute. That could work. <laughs> that could work. God is other-centered. The holy ones, as we're reading here, are other-centered. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's a beautiful thing, and he wants us to be that way. And we can be that way in him, but not by ourselves. Because in and of ourselves, we are desperately wicked. Okay, let's continue on through this verse. To the intent that the living may know, the living, that's us, right? may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Did you hear that? Do you believe that? Amen. Okay. Now, if you truly believe that God ruleth in the kingdom of men, what does that do to your faith? Hello? What's going on on this planet? Just some questions I'm asking. I'm not... I have no desire to tell people what to think, okay? I just want to 
shed some light. Okay? Had too many people that they can't make a decision until, well, I gotta find out what he has to say about this, or I have to find out what she says about this, or let me wait a second here, and da 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 Wait, don't you have a mind? Aren't you connected to God the Father? Are you a Christian? I mean, you can go into the most holy place with the Lord Jesus and meet with Him. I mean, the beauty of the Sabbath is God has taken 24 hours, right? I can't prove this, but this is my thought. You know we're in the judgment, right? You're at Venice, you're good at this. I believe on this day, this 24-hour period, that's shut down. Like I said, I can't prove it. This is my thought, my opinion. And God has devoted this time, this sanctuary and time for us to come together with Him. It's not common. It's holy time. And it isn't tomorrow. And it isn't the day before. Right? It's Sabbath. God said Sabbath. God's word has to be respected. We know where this thing's going. Look, where am I going with this? Soon and very soon, people will be persecuted because of a day. Now they're either going to stand up, right, and not care about what other people think, or they're going to get swept away with some hardship. Because maybe you can't go down to the 7-Eleven and buy a Slurpee anymore. That was supposed to be a joke, you know. <laughs> but we need, to, we need to be serious. We need to be real serious about the things that God says. Because God speaks, and it is. He ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it who? The basest of men? Can't God put anybody in charge he wants to? Doesn't God see the heart? Okay. Do we trust him? Okay, so do we fight it or do we join him? Or maybe we don't know what to do. Or maybe we got to talk to our friends to see what we should do. Huh? Or maybe we go to the source. Turn our Bibles to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah 6 and chapter 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Twain is two, Kyla. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voices of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. 
Then said I, who's this I? Isaiah. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Isn't that strange? And he took it, the tongs, but he has it in his hand. So why did he need the tongs to begin with? It's just a question I had. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Just throwing it out there. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Thy sin is purged. What does is, what is purged mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know how sick this world's gotten? They got, they got a show or some movie or something that's called The Purge. Have you heard of that? Yes. <gasps> yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to get into it. Mm -hmm. But it's disgusting. This world has lost its mind. Same. Yeah, absolutely. So let's carry on here in verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Us. Us. There's this big fight about the Trinity, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. How many times have we bumped into this just in this talk today? Hello. Just want to say that because the Bible says you can't build a whole theology on a verse of Scripture, right? Here a little, there a little. Then you build your theology. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Is that confusing? Why is he saying it that way? So he wants them to tell the people, but they're not going to hear. Is it because God doesn't want them to hear? Make the heart of this people fat. This is still God speaking. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Did you hear it now? Hmm. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land utterly desolate and the Lord had removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land but yet in it shall be a tenth and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Isn't that funny that it's a tenth? Why is it a tenth? What does God ask for? A tenth. Hmm. How many does the spirit of prophecy say? One in ten? How serious are we, brothers and sisters? Because if you're going to get real serious, you've got to be focused on Christ and not concerned what everybody else says or thinks. That's the real story that I want to get through today. If you heard nothing else that I've said, 
I hope you hear that because the times are coming and people are easily swayed and people are fearful and panic. I mean, if I just started jumping up and going, ah! you guys would all be like, oh, what's going on? Right? Hello? All right, my friends, I do want to... I want to mention something about what Ricky's put in this wonderful bulletin, if I can find it. Where is our bulletin? I just had it. I... no, I don't. Yes, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I just want to read a little some of this here. It says justification by faith. See that? In the prophecy of Daniel, it was recorded of Christ that he shall make reconciliation for iniquity and bring in everlasting righteousness. Hello. By his perfect obedience, he has satisfied the claims of the law. And my only hope is found in looking to him as my, sure, my substitute and surety, who obeyed the law perfectly for me. By faith in his merits, I am free from the condemnation of the law. He clothes me with his righteousness, which answers all the demands of the law. You see that? There it is. Per you can't get any better. Can you end on a better note than that? That is beautiful. And me personally, I have to guard myself about being kind of loose. More so than Mr. Self-Righteous Man that's looking down on everybody. I... I was that guy many years ago. I don't think I'll ever be that guy again. But now I'm in the danger of being the other guy. The devil doesn't care what ditch he puts you in. Right? It doesn't matter. I mean, you're not any better if you're this guy or if you're that guy. You need Christ driving that wagon. And my problem is I like to drive. I think my wife does too because she's got a new truck and she won't let me drive it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll let me work on it for her. No, I don't drive it. Anyways, let us, let us get from this, this talk, this message. Hey, found it, Ricky. It's under my Bible. Um, let us get from this talk that God really is in charge of everything. Even if it doesn't seem that way. Okay? Even if it doesn't seem that way. You got to know that nothing, God cannot be sucker punched. Okay? He did not oversleep this morning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The reason he says, I, I am, is because there isn't any place that he isn't, or hasn't been, or won't be before anybody else has seen it. You follow me? This thing is going to get rough, and it's going to be hard, but he's in complete control. And if he tells you to go and do something... And you don't feel like you got the means and you have no clue how you're supposed to do it, but he's just telling you to go, then just go. You know? I like the illustration of he's telling you to get on a train, but you don't even have a ticket, right? Hundreds of miles away, and you're still asking him, how am I going to get on this train? Now you're looking at the train, 
and you still don't know, you say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be faithful, but I just have no clue what you're talking about or how this is going to happen. And just as you're about, you're about to step on that train, some guy hands you a ticket. I mean, that's the way God works. He's always on time. He's never been late. So don't even think about that stuff. Let him deal with it. He says, I got you. Then believe.